We will now look at coordinates x and y separately, each as a function of t. If you are new to parametric equations, this may be the first time you have seen x as a dependent variable on the vertical axis. Here is where the labeling of t, x, and y at every vertex in the previous step may prove helpful. These are the same values I just highlighted at the end of the last step. To connect the dots, technically there are infinitely many ways to do so. We can draw like this, or this, or even this. And any of those options are valid as long as you then draw the y of t graph in a way that is mathematically agreeable. I'm not going to elaborate on that point any more than I feel is necessary for this activity, so if you have questions about different ways of parameterizing a curve, I suggest you follow up with someone who is comfortable going deep into that topic. Here, we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Let's cram all three graphs onto the screen at the same time. Notice that in order to fit all these onto the screen, we'll temporarily limit the graphs to t values from 0 to 13. For any line segments in your original design, the best choice, thankfully, is the most intuitive one. Just connect the corresponding points on the x of t and y of t graphs with line segments as well. For parabolas like the one you see here that open upward or downward, as opposed to leftward or rightward, we're dealing with the transformation of the basic function y equals x squared. Notice that for this basic case, if we let x equal t, then by substitution we would conclude that y must equal t squared. y is the square of x. And since x equals t, y is the square of t. This tells us that the x of t relationship is linear, and the y of t relationship is quadratic, right? Therefore, we'll connect the corresponding x of t points with a linear function. And I'll go ahead and trim this parabola back. And then connect the corresponding y of t points with a quadratic function. Let's next look at this cubic segment of the Batman logo. It's a sideways cubic, so to speak. A transformation of x equals y cubed instead of the more familiar y equals x cubed. We could let x equal t like we did a moment ago. And then by substitution, y must equal t to the one-third power, or cube root of t. That is one of the infinitely many ways one could parameterize this curve. But when possible, I prefer to avoid these fractional exponents. So instead, let's let y be linear. Let y equal t. And therefore, by substitution, since x equals the cube of y, x must equal t cubed. This tells us that if y of t is linear, then x of t must be cubic. So I'll draw a line segment between those corresponding points on the y of t graph. And envisioning what the graph of this equation looks like in my head, I'll draw a part of a cubic graph like that on the x of t graph. I'll point out that if this cubic graph on the xy plane had continued like this, I would have continued the x of t graph accordingly like this. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this and will find it to be a pretty intuitive and easy step. The one common curve for which I believe reasonable people may choose different parameterizations is the ellipse, and we do have a segment of an ellipse here. If you are not yet fluent with trigonometry, and more specifically the unit circle, then you may be inclined to model an ellipse with the standard form equation then you might choose to solve for y and write the equation explicitly in this form, plus or minus square root of blah 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 plus k. And from there you would conclude that x of t might be linear and then y of t would be a quarter ellipse. And if you're not fluent with trig, go ahead and go that route. It does work. But if you're comfortable with trigonometry and the unit circle, then in my opinion this is a no-brainer. Let's parameterize this quarter of ellipse trigonometrically. Let's bring back our imaginary bug. And notice that when our bug walks along this segment of the ellipse, at first the x values are increasing relatively quickly because the motion is more left-right than it is up-down. 
but by the time you get to the end of the ellipse, the motion is more up-down than left-right, and therefore the x values are not increasing quite as quickly. So again, x values increasing quickly at first, but not so much by the end of that segment. Accordingly, on the x of t graph, rise quickly at first, but then not so much by the end of that segment. Contrast that with the y values. Let's walk our bug along that ellipse segment again and focus on the y values. Notice the y values are not changing very much here near the beginning because the motion is more left right than up down, but by the time we get to the end, that's where the y values are increasing more quickly. So accordingly, on our y of t graph, we'll increase not very quickly at the beginning, but more so at the end of the segment. And just to be absolutely clear, these two segments that we just drew on the x of t and y of t graphs, those are not the shapes of ellipses or quarter ellipses. Those are segments of sinusoids, both of them. I find it helpful to label these curves types like I'm demonstrating here, because when you're hand drawing these curves, it would be very easy to confuse a sinusoid graph or a cubic graph in this case, or to confuse a parabola and a sinusoid from a hand sketch. Take a moment for nonlinear curves to make sure that you're drawing the concavity correctly, if I may go ahead and use some calculus terminology. What I mean is, be very alert to the very easy mistake of drawing, say, this curve, this cubic curve, concave up, instead of its correct concave down. Or drawing this parabola, concave down, instead of its correct concave up. As needed, go back to the original xy graph and ask yourself, when are the x values increasing relatively quickly versus slowly? When are the y values increasing relatively quickly versus relatively slowly? Do what you need to do to make sure that you get that concavity correct. All right, here are our final x of t and y of t graphs for the full interval of t from 0 to 21.